You're listening to Maria and Russell broadcasting live. This is The Crafty Cafe on LearnRadio.net. Hello and a very warm welcome to this, our show number 29. You're safely at the Crafty Cafe, our creative arts learning show. Good to have your company today and thank you so much indeed for stopping by. We are video casting as well and if you can see us on video, that's me waving and Maria is also with us. Hello and welcome to the club. We've got some amazing activities for you today. This is show number 29, Unbelievable Biscuits. And you can find this on the show page just by going to learnradio.net forward slash crafty cafe. Swipe down and find today's date, which of course is Thursday, the 1st of July. Or you could search on Unbelievable Biscuits to find the show page because there will be references to some of the resources on that show page later on in the show. Maria, what have we got planned for our lovely learners today? Oh, we've got a wonderful, wonderful show today because we are thinking about biscuits. Now, we were inspired by the fabulous, the biscuit delicious James Harris and he's written a book called The Unbelievable Biscuit Factory. Now, spoiler alert, shh, don't tell anyone. It's a super secret science lab filled with orange fluffy monsters. Well, not so much of a spoiler alert because James has actually put that on the front of his book, so we're all good. That was such a great show, Russell. Where can our listeners listen again? Oh, they have to enjoy it again and again and again, folks. Just go to learnradio.net forward slash James Harris, and that will open up his show page. You can also find the show on a video clip as well by going to YouTube. If you need an adult supervision for that, let them know. We've got a link directly from our show page, learnradio.net forward slash James Harris. And then you can listen to it, download the podcast on the go to your favourite device, or you could listen to it on the show page, or you could watch Watch us there. What a great activity. It was a brilliant show. Thanks a lot, James. Amazing. We were so inspired, weren't we, Maria? Oh, it was crackers. It was brilliant. Absolutely wonderful. And we learned about the employees as well. Now, many of the Biscuit employees have these fabulous badges on them to introduce themselves. So my badge says, hello, my name is Maria. Ask me about my marmalade crumblies. That's just wonderful. I made that up. Now, Russell, I know you've got a badge as well. I have indeed. And mine says, my name is Russell. Ask me about my marmite and pickle tarts. Isn't that great? (laughs) And the badges are just ever so slightly too big because they're just awkward. And that's really good. So we've got our badges in. You could make your badges as well. And if you listen to that radio show, you could make your own badges. All the instructions are in the show. So go find that. Learnradio.net forward slash James. Harris. Brilliant, Maria. What have we got planned for today? Well, for our starter activity, you only need something to draw on and something to draw with. And we would like you to draw a biscuit that you really enjoy. Or you could even draw a biscuit that you've made up, just like James Harris did in the book. I could draw some marmalade crumblies. They look like jammy dodges, but with a little orange centre inside. Yummy. I would absolutely buy one of those. And I'm really excited about my badge. It's slightly wonky as well. I quite like that. It's a little bit little bit awkward it's bonkers it's bonkers maria ever so slightly bonkers (laughs) thank you very much now what other biscuits could we draw russell well anything that's absolutely yummy you could design something you could do the biscuit in the shape of something interested you could do a biscuit with concentric circles with different fillings you could do one with squirty cream you could do biscuits with fillings sandwich biscuits like custard creams there's so much to choose from you could design something fabuloso you could just be incredibly creative and we'd like you to do that right now You're listening to Maria and Russell broadcasting live. This is The Crafty Cafe on LearnRadio.net. Welcome back, everyone. And I wonder how that activity went. Where could they have put their pictures, Russell? They could have put that on the show page, couldn't they? They can indeed, uh, learner listeners. It's easy peasy. Just go to the uh, Crafty Cafe show page. That's the one that you're listening to this on. If you're watching the video or playing back our podcast, scroll or swipe down if you're using your finger on your tablet and find Padlet number one. And you just click on that pink circle with a plus key in the bottom right hand corner and put your first name in the box, which pops up. And you can either upload a photograph from your device of your sketch 
sketch drawing, or you may have done it on your tablet or your computer and you can just upload it that way. Or you could write us a few notes on there if you wanted to and then click on the background and we'll approve that just as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you very much, Russell. Now, if you'd like to join us with our make along, we have a wonderful clip coming up just in a moment about making some pretend biscuits using some foam sheets, although you could use any other material that you have in your homes or schools. Now, Russell, how can our listeners upload their photo? We've got another Padlet, haven't we? We have indeed. And listeners, it's easy peasy. Just scroll down a little further down the page and click on that Padlet. Find the pink circle again. They work in all the same way with the plus key on there. Click on that once. Up will pop a little box. You write your first names only, please, in the top box. And then below that, write us a message or use the up arrow key to upload a photograph that's actually on your device. Or you could take a photograph of your drawing from the camera connected to your device. If you've got one, it's easy peasy. And if you need help, just ask an adult. It's straightforward on there. There is help on the Padlet as well. And we'd love you to share your drawings with us, folks. So today, I'm going to show you how to make these little foam biscuit creations using some sheets of foam. Look, if I turn them sideways, they look like real biscuits. OK, so I'm going to put these over here and I'm going to show you how to make this chocolate one first. So I've got some brown foam. These are sheets of foam. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something circular and I'm going to put that right at the edge. Now, I could put it in the middle, but then I won't be able to use the rest of it. So I'm going to put it all the way over here and I'm going to use a pencil to draw around it. I'm going to draw around this like this all the way around let me take it off and see if i've got that lovely and i'm going to draw the second one i'm going to draw the second one about here because i'll need one for the top and one for the bottom so draw around all like this there we go now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use these kind of scissors these are decorative art scissors i call them crinkly scissors okay because they've got crinkly edges can see the kind of crinkle ones they are there okay and these are some different ones here so let's cut around them with these scissors to make this kind of pattern shape sometimes when you have biscuits like this they have a pattern shape usually when you're making biscuits you have a cookie cutter and you cut them out but we're going to cut them out with these let's see how we go so I'm going to put my pointy bit on the round bit. Can you see? So I've seen where the circle bit is and I'm going to cut around it. Now, these scissors are quite old. They're used to cutting paper. And when you cut paper, they blunt the edges a little bit. So I'm going to try and do it quite slowly. It's got a very satisfying sound as I'm turning them around. Now, don't worry, because you won't be able to see that pencil line because we will turn it around when we make our biscuit. Let's just cut that little bit more around here. Don't worry if you've got little bits that are coming out. I'll show you in a minute because we'll be able to snippity snip snip that straight out. So here I've got some little bits here, so I'm going to take that out. A little bit out so that's going to be part of our biscuit see i'm going to turn it around and then you won't see the pencil mark on it let's do that for the next one as well cut around cut around oh, the scissors are a bit squeaky they haven't been used for a while oh. snippity snip nearly at the end and cut there we go so there is my bottom of the biscuit and my top of the biscuit now it looks a bit flat so we'll need the little cream part in size now you could use the same method or you could just get the same circle pop it onto here and just cut around it so it's just the cream filling I'm using white and brown, but you can use any kind of ones that you want. You could have even a different colour, okay, for the cream. And I'm just going to use an ordinary pair of scissors to cut this out. Cut them around. Like I said, don't worry too much if the pencil is here, because you'll be able to turn it around and you won't see it on the biscuit. 
So we're making biscuits because at the end of May there's National Biscuit Day. And that's why we're doing these. Oh, let's give that a little bit of a snip there. Move this away. I'm going to use this for the pink wafer that I'm going to make in a moment. So there's my circle, my cream. Turn that around. Now I could put them just like this, glue them down, glue them down. Okay, it's quite a flat biscuit and that's okay. If you're happy with that, that's no problem. But you might want to make it a little bit bigger. And so what I'm going to do is I've got some little off cuts here, some little off cuts that I've used before, and I'm going to use these to pad them out a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one here, going to put one here, and I think I'm going to trim another bit here like that because when I put the cream on here you see it's elevated it a little bit it's made it just that little bit thicker so it looks like that biscuit is more biscuit shaped so got my PVA glue PVA glue is very good for gluing fabrics together or card together so let's just put a little blob here pop it down a little bit of glue here, pop it down. So it doesn't really have to be very neat because you're not going to see them. Pop it like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of PVA glue on the top, top, top. And then I can put my cream down. I can squish it down. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to do the same to the top bit as well here. Just going to cut a few remnants. And that way I'm not throwing any of these things away. Let's see. Now I want to make it a little bit shaped so that it's not too, it doesn't poke out. Can you see? I could put them like that. There we go. I think all oh, that bit looks perfect there. Glue them down here. Glue them underneath. Glue this one underneath. Glue underneath. Oh, they're slippery a little bit. Glue that underneath. And then put a little bit more on top and glue the top of our biscuit down. Now, if you want to draw on the top of your biscuit first, I would recommend that you do that before you put this on top. Because once you put it on top, it moves a little bit about. So let's just do that now. So sometimes biscuits have little air holes in them, little air holes in to make them dry, I suppose. I wonder why they do that. I'm going to put some little, I've got my felt tip here and I'm going to just put some little holes around it to make it more biscuity. But you could look at some biscuits that you have and you might be able to do the same kind of pattern. Okay. And I've written chalk on here, but I think I'm going to leave this one plain. Leave this one plain. So now I can put this straight onto my biscuit like this and just pat it. And so now what's happened is you can't see the little bits in the middle, but it does look a little bit more like a like a biscuit sandwich. Oh, that looks too good. That looks like you could eat it. But like I said, you could leave that and just flatten it down. So that's the chocolate biscuit. Mmm, yummy. Let's put that over here. Now here I've got a pink wafer. So pink wafer, I've got one pink and then I've got some white foam, another pink, another white and another pink. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've got my pink foam here and I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to use the width of the ruler to measure out my biscuit. Now you can make your biscuits as big or as small as you like. It's up to you. You can make some little miniature ones. So there's my width of the ruler and I'm going to draw it all the way down like this. And I'm going to make another one because I will need two of these for the top and the bottom, but I'll need one in the middle. Okay. So with my ordinary scissors, I'm going to cut them all the way here. Oh, I went off a little bit there. There we go. Cut, cut, cut. Put that to one side. Use that again for something else. And now I'm going to cut all the way down, middle. Ta -da. And now what I want is I want to fold them across like this, fold them across like that. And I know that that's going to be my middle. So I've got my ruler again and I'm going to draw a line so that I can cut and then do the same here as well. Fold, press, open, 
draw a line so that I can cut it. Here we go. Cut down the centre here. Cut down the centre here. And now I've got the top of my biscuit, my middle of my biscuit, and the bottom of my biscuit. And we'll leave that for something else. So now we'll need the middle part, the filling of it. So here's one that I've done before. That's the one I use for the biscuit, the chocolate biscuit. So I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to, hmm. Now this isn't going to be all the way across now that I can see because it looks like I'll need a little filling here. It looks like I'm going to run out here. Oh dear, I wonder what I could do. Oh, I know, I'll make my biscuits a little bit smaller. So I'll make these biscuits a little bit smaller. Let's put those together and I'm going to cut. Let me see, how am I going to get this? Let's see how long that will be. Hmm, I'm going to measure here. That's about 100 all the way through. From start to beginning is about a hundred. Oh, 200. Okay, so half of 200 is 100. So I'll need to cut these biscuits to a hundred. Oh, good job I checked because otherwise I wouldn't have had enough foam. So let's have a look. Measure here to a hundred. Draw a line across here. Hold them together and just snip, snip that across. Lovely. And now I can draw my line across here, the width of the ruler, snip. And actually, while I'm here, I might measure the hundred. Oh, that was already here. Lovely. And here, that's a hundred as well. Oh dear, look, I've got a little nip out of it. That's all right. It looks like somebody's had a little bite of the biscuit. So let's cut this across. and snip in the middle so we don't need this now this one because it's got quite a few layers it looks quite a big biscuit anyway so i'm going to layer this down so one then my cream filling and my next little wafer then my cream filling oh with a bit with a with a little bite taken out of it somebody was hungry and then here and then i can glue those all down together to make my biscuit i don't need to have those little pads in between and so recommend that you to make this pattern that you take your pink felt tip and you draw the wafer part before you glue it down so how am i going to do that i'm just going to put my ruler here and i'm going to draw a line and another line here another line here and i'm going to keep on going until i've reached the end now I'm noticing that my nails are making an indent into this foam. So when you're doing it, just watch out. Because look, so if I put my nail in there, you see, it's made a little tiny indent. I wonder if you can see that. I can see that. So It's like a memory foam. It's like remembering. And now I'm going to turn that around here. Oh, I think I'll turn it around like that way. And I'm going to do the same over here. So I'm going to make a little crisscross pattern like a pink wafer. So now I've got these ideas how to make these biscuits. You can make any type of biscuits that you like. These are lovely and you can use these to play with. You can use these to have a pretend tea party with. You can just use them to give us little positive gifts. You could write something on there. Lovely, like that. And then all we'll need to do is glue all of those on, one after each other and you will have your biscuit. Now you might want to give it a little bit of a trim. So if you put them all down here, you might want to, if you don't want that bit here, you could just give that a little bit of a, a little bit of a trimmy. There we go. You could use those for something else later. It's a smaller biscuit, but that's okay. Glue those down and you'll have some biscuits here to play with. And there you go. That's how you make a biscuit creation out of some foam. I wonder what biscuits you will make. Happy making. I had such fun making those biscuits, Russell. They are pretend, but I actually wanted to give them a little bit of a nom nom nom. They were wonderful, weren't they? Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. We love that. And you can watch any of our shows again, folks, just by looking through the Crafty Cafe folder on the website. It's easy peasy. What have we got next, Maria? 
Well, today we are thinking about biscuits because we were really inspired by the amazing James Harris and his book, The Unbelievable Biscuit Factory. There are lots of amazing sounding biscuits in this book. I'm going to share them with you. One of them is called Nibbly Nom Noms. Mm. Another one is Coconutties. Another one, Choco Berry Crunch. These are all from the wonderful imagination of James Harris and my personal favourite, Wafery Thins. Wow. Which one did you like there? Oh, well, not the wafery all. thins because they sound <laughs> incredibly thin and not at all filling. My biscuit has to actually fill that gap in the tummy. It's got, it's got to be fulfilling, and I don't. The word thin is just not <laughs> pulling me in. I want it'll it'll be the nibbly nom noms. Although I'm not kind of you know how nibbly and how much nom nom is in a nom nom. <laughs> so I think I'd probably go for the choco berry crunch because that sounds biscuity. That does sound, sounds, sounds biscuity. It sounds dunkability as well. Which... Yes, we like that as well. We'll talk some more about that as well because we love the crunchy sound and we like to dunk them in a warm beverage. We'll have some more information on that later in, in the show. Now, I'd like to share with you some information about biscuits, Russell, because biscuits have been around for a long time because the name biscuit means twice cooked. And there is some evidence that the first biscuits were baked in Persia during the 7th century BCE. That's before Common Era. Now, it wasn't until the 10th century that they started to appear in Europe. Now, in ancient times, soldiers would often spend many weeks at sea, so they needed a little snack, a little snackette that could be stored for a long time. They knew that if you dried something out, it would last longer and wouldn't go off. Now, the first type of biscuit didn't have any sugar in them. Now, Russell, have you had any, have any crackers or biscuits that didn't have any sugar in them? Uh, I tried them once, Maria. Didn't enjoy them. I've said, no, of course, cheese biscuits often don't have sugar and they're quite dry because they want the mm. flavour of the cheese. They're really basically a landing platform to put cheese on to get them into your mouth. But they provide a lovely texture mix between the dry crunchiness mm. and the soft, gooey cheese, depending on what you you are eating so uh, not a huge fan of that because i like my biscuits to be fulfilling and really hit that spot so um but you could always use a digestive with uh, mm. cheese biscuits and that's a nice mix that's a, a crossover biscuit if you like one that sits very nicely in the in the sweet category the venn diagram that's got sweetie biscuits and also very nicely in cheese biscuits because it does really lend itself very nice and sometimes you get those in very posh places as a posh mm. cheese and uh, biscuit as well so really good a suggestive digestive would be oh, my I suggestion oh i like that mm. a suggestive digestive it'd be nice if they had little suggestions on it i suggest you have this with some cheese that would be very good wouldn't it i'd love that mm. yummy now the sweet type of biscuit started around the seventh century and persians began to experiment by adding different ingredients like water and sugar and eggs and butter and cream to improve it. Now, some biscuits have fruit and some have honey. And nowadays there are so many different types of biscuit. Now I know I've got two top biscuits. I've got a lemon biscuit. They mm. always disappear in our house very quickly. And also that gentle, beautiful one called the biscotti. Have you ever tried them? <gasps> oh, yes, yeah, I love it. It's a very lovely. dense biscuit. It has a high dunkability rating because you can submerge that and it doesn't it doesn't all drop off in your warm coffee. It's really nice with a strong, because nice, I suspect it's Italian in origin as well. Yeah. Really nice uh, biscuit with a lovely almondy, strong, peanutty kind of nutty Ooh. flavor. Lovely. And they just tastes so gorgeous alongside a strong cup of Italian coffee. Really does uh, float my boat. I like that very much. That's a mm. treat. That's a Christmas treat for me. That is. Now, I know that in James Harris's book, he talked about smoothies as well. I wonder if you can make some biscuit smoothies. You must mm. be able to. That would be quite nice. <laughs> B biscuits in the smoothie machine. Mm. If you add well, some fruit, I'm sure that would be all right. Okay, that's a lovely <laughs> idea. I've, I've not tried it before. You should try everything at least once. What a great idea, Maria. I shall think about that next time I'm making a smoothie. Thank you very much. Now, in the UK, there are many types of biscuit available. And we can also buy biscuits from other countries too. So I'm going to share with you the top 10 biscuits from the UK that was published in September 2020. So here we go with our here. top 10. 
I'll read the numbers out and you make it sound like a countdown chart. Okay. So I'll go in at number 10. It's that crunch cream. Wow, up two places to number nine. It's that chocolate bourbon. Wow, up four places to number eight. Nom, 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 Maryland cookie. Mm, in at number seven. Nothing dodgy about this biscuit. It's a jammy dodger. Oh, steady at number six. Oh, we love this one. Family favourite, a custard cream. Wow, coming in at number five. Oh, here's your nom nom noms, chocolate oh. hobnob. Wow, here are the top four in at number four. Well, this is a bit, you know, is it a cake? Is it a biscuit? But it's a Jaffa cake. Who knows? It's at number four. Lovely. Here are the top three in at number three. Chocolate finger. Mm. And number two. Shortbread. A nice little biscuit there. And our top, our absolutely top one. It's got a drum roll here for you. This is in at number one. It is that chocolate digestive. It's the suggestive digestive with a bit of chocolate on the top. Yum. That was the countdown there. Amazing. We sounded like a chart show there, Maria. We did indeed. And it's a shame that the um, the malted milk and the nice biscuit didn't get in the top 10. They Gosh. were number 17 and 18. A bit disappointed, but you know, well, maybe next a year. There's few not on there as well. I'm just kind of thinking, where is the Gary Baldy? And I'm thinking, where is that Viennese world that should be well, there? Well, interesting you say that because the Gary Baldy came in at number 20, just got in, and that Viena <gasps> Viennese world is number 12. I saw somebody on social media making them the other day. Oh. I think it was from Ke uh, Tamsin from Kenilworth Books. She she was making some and making them beautifully together and putting some chocolate spread in between. I think I might have to go and sample them. Yum, yum, yum. Mm, sounds good. Anyway, tell me about the ginger biscuits there. Well, ginger biscuits are really good to eat if you have travel sickness, but I think it's more the ginger in it than actually the biscuit. Um, but you can have sweet biscuits, you can have savoury biscuits, you can have oat cakes, crackers or water biscuits. But Russell, I'm not quite sure what the difference is between crackers and water biscuit. I thought they were the same biscuit, are they not? No, they're not the same biscuits. Oh, About okay. £3.50 at Waitrose, the difference there, I have to say. I'm here all week, folks. Uh, no, I think the uh, the water biscuits are really very plain and quite traditional. They're quite mm. a dry biscuit. And, and mm. sometimes if you have a very strong cheese, you don't want a strong biscuit. You just want something to land that cheese on and get it into your mouth safely. So mm. it's a very dry. It doesn't have any flavour at all. It's very, very flavourless, I have to say. Mm. And I think the crackers are a little more creamy, a little more softer. Oh. Perhaps you would put other things on there, less stinky cheese on a cream mm. cracker because it's not too bothered. I think if you're a discerning cracker eater, you go for the mm. driest, tasteless biscuits, mm. which is a bit odd, really. But you've got to get that cheese into your mouth safely, remember. Mm. I wonder if there are any cracker connoisseurs. Maybe there's somebody who has a job out there. They're a cracker connoisseur. Can you imagine having that on their badge? Ask oh. me about my crackers. That would be wonderful. Wow. Wow, great. What a great idea. Wow, amazing. Well, some of these biscuits you can eat with other things as they complement them very well. And pickled onion flavoured things. I know that James Harris was talking about there was a vending machine in the book that sells pickled onion flavoured things. Now, what could you eat with these savoury biscuits, Russell? What would well, you have? Well, he's a little bit bonkers about his pickled onion flavoured everything. I mean, it's a little bit odd there as well. Everything's pickled onion flavour and gosh, that's going to be a, a, a job and a half. So, well, you could have fish paste. Mm. Uh, you could have mushroom pate. You could have something cream cheese with a half an olive sliced mm. on top. Mm. You could put some fruit on there you could do so oh, yes. much with that you could be really inventive with those fillings and toppings oh you could put some yogurt and some 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 fruit or crumble up some biscuits as well that would be quite nice i'm back to the i'm back to my imagination and the smoothies maybe something i could have with that now i don't know about you russell but i like dunking my biscuits in my tea and i know there are some good biscuits to be able to do that now do you know the best type of biscuit for dunkability well, I'd say something that was dry. Surely something can absorb lots of things. So a really dry biscuit would be kind of a rich tea, kind of flavourless, mm. really. And it, that's got to survive the longest time submersed in a warm beverage. So I'd say rich well, tea. How did I get on with that? Well, according to online sources, 
a rich tea biscuit can only survive in a cup of tea and a hot beverage for about four seconds. Not no. very long at all. No, not very long at all. Oh, that's going to make a nasty gooey mess at the bottom of your cup I of tea. Know. That is not something you want to be fishing out in good company <laughs> with that teaspoon. It's not a good look, really. It's kind of digging, trying to get that biscuit no. out. Ugh. Not at all. Now, a jammy dodger, a little bit longer, double the time. That's eight seconds. Wow. That's nice, isn't it? Maybe that's because it's the sandwich. You've got like biscuit, then you've got a bit oh, of filling. Oh, double. You've got double mm -hmm. biscuit there and it's held together with a bit of cement kind of thing. And that's that cream filling and a bit of jam as well because the jam's not going to easily absorb the water, is it? So that is a very interesting one. What's the biscuit that's going to last the longest in a warm beverage there, Maria? Well, the think? longest that we have at the moment is a shortbread. A shortbread, wow. do you know how many seconds that might be? No, I mean, how, I mean, 20, 30, I mean, how long, how long could that <laughs> well, be? Well, online sources say it's about 11 seconds, 11 seconds. But you see, this is all dependent on your cup of tea temperature. So, of course, if, you, if you're like me, you start drinking a cup of tea, you leave it there for about four hours, then drink it, it's going to be a little bit colder. So, you know, it's all to do with the temperatures. But this is a wonderful activity that you could try at home, you know, get a, 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 a board of biscuits out and just have a little bit of a dunk of booty. You're doing some science at the same time. Now, Russell, how can our listeners share some information about their biscuit favourites? Well, on the show page, listener learners, you will find a Padlet number two. And you can just scroll down to there and we're asking the question, what is your favourite biscuit? And what biscuit recipes have you ever made? You could write those up on there. Find Padlet two, find the pink circle, click on the plus key and then put your name, first names only, please, in the top box. And then below that, you can either write or you could upload some writing that you've done elsewhere on paper and pen if you wanted or paper and pencil you could upload that as an image or you can actually write on the padlet it's easy peasy and that padlet is available to you this is the arts club at the crafty cafe because it's fun i love it <laughs> Hi, you're listening to me, Russell Prue, and Maria Wojciechowska Kanida, and we are here with our arts club. It's our crafty cafe, and we are talking unbelievable biscuits. And Maria, they're unbelievable, aren't they? They are unbelievable, and the book is unbelievable. The book is Crackers. Now, I know that if you haven't already got a I've got a book you can go to the show page there's a wonderful link russell isn't there where can we go absolutely. to absolutely always with our book clubs listeners we provide you with a small independent bookshop click through purchase and you can get signed copies and some really extra freebies and it's always worth doing that rather than buying from the online shop and you know who i mean so go for those smaller shops because sometimes the authors pop in and sign copies and you can look around for that we have a show page just go to learnradio.net forward slash james harris and on that show page there is a link to the drake bookshop and it is james's favorite local bookshop and they always have some special deals so look those out we think that's very important don't we Bria? Absolutely. It's so important to keep those independent bookshops in business. Lovely. Now, we've thought of some other wonderful activities that you can explore because maybe you like investigating. So you could investigate biscuits all the way from A to Z from all around the world. You could see if you could have a biscuit tasting day. You could enjoy them with a cup of tea or a hot chocolate or anything that you'd like to dink, dunk your little biscuits in. That would be yeah. wonderful. Now, maybe you like inventing. What could you do, Russell? Well, you could create a new biscuit. What a great idea there. Or you could combine two biscuits together to create a new one. You could even make yourself a badge uh, from the unbelievable biscuit factory like this with a new biscuit name on it. Don't forget, we've got our badges here. Some great names there. You could actually create, you could invent something really. I mean, just a digestive, suggestive, jammy dodger. Mm. You could mix and match and do some really creative stuff. Now, how could you communicate those ideas to folks, Maria? Well, if you like talking, you're an orator, you could find out what biscuit means in different languages. Are there any customs for eating biscuits at different types of the day? There are some breakfast biscuits. Some people like them later on at night, just before they go to bed with a, with a hot drink. Lots of things to do. 
Now, what mm. about if you like working with people? You like collaborating, Russell? What could we do? Oh, you could do some really interesting. I was just thinking all day biscuits, Maria. Those have got to be the favourite ones. Biscuits you could eat all day long. Well, if you want to collaborate, folks, you could make biscuits to deck together. You could actually bake something mm -hmm. and pop it in an oven. If you need an adult supervision, you can get some help for that. So just ask. But making something together mm -hmm. is really collaborative and very exciting. What if you're super creative, Maria? Oh, if you like your creativity, you could make a tower of biscuits. You could predict how many mm. biscuits you could get piled up before they fall. Or you could put a little filling, some little, you know, some jam in between all of them just to make them stay together. You could even make that Roman arch. You could make a bridge. Who knows what you could make? You could make anything. You could even play Jenga. You could with those chocolate fingers. Anything you can do when you've got a creative mind is wonderful. Now, what about thinking and philosophy, Russell? Wow, this is one of our favourite topics as well. If you really want to stretch yourself with this, you could answer the age-old question. Can you eat the same biscuit twice? Mm. Really interesting question. Can you eat the same biscuit twice? And that's how I'll take a little bit of thinking about that. And we like that because we like a bit of philosophy. Some great ideas there, folks, for you to follow up and do some extra learning. We think that's really important, don't we, Maria? We do indeed. It's really exciting. And actually, don't just stop at these wonderful ideas. It might inspire you to do something different. And if you do, let us know. That would be wonderful. Now, if they are doing any of the activities or they are inspired to do that, Russell, where can they let us know? Uh, we'd love for you folks to share your work or comment on other people's work by going to Padlet number three. What fun learning are you inspired to do? We'd love for you to share your work and ideas of where you might go next. It's always good because someone else might listen or read what you're going to do and think, wow, this is amazing. I so would like to do that myself. And that's so important. And we'd just like you to share your ideas. So what have we inspired and motivated you to do? on the Padlet. Write those answers now, find that pink circle, click on the plus key, put your first name in the top box and then write away. You're listening to Maria and Russell broadcasting live. This is The Crafty Cafe on LearnRadio.net. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much indeed for that. Having a good session here, Maria. Well, I tell you what, my tummy's rumbling quite a lot because every time we mention a biscuit, my tummy's going, oh, yes, I could have that. So I might have to go and have a little, little look in the cupboards and see what kind of biscuits there are. This is a wonderful show. What did you enjoy learning about, Russell? I think the dunkability. I always like that as well because that's something that I can test and I'd like to know the difference in temperature. So does the dunkability curve of a biscuit change mm -hmm. with the highness of the temperature if the, if the mm -hmm. beverage is warmer or does it... Uh, is it different if there's milk or less milk? Has the mm. viscosity, the thickness of the liquid got anything to do it does hot chocolate last longer mm. or does the biscuit crumble more quickly it's gonna be messy there may involve mm. some biscuits and lots of drinking but wow this has got to be a cracking learning activity Maria there's just so much science and so much nibbly nom noms I've really enjoyed making up the names I loved making up my name I think James Harris is an absolute genius and I really really hope that there's going to be another book because this book if you haven't read it already it is crackers. I enjoyed it from start to finish. It's I love absolutely it. wonderful. The badges are ingenious, <laughs> I have to say. My name is Russell. Ask me about my Marmite and pickle jam tarts. And of course, if uh, you watch or listen to our interview with James, you'll know that pickled onions very important to him as well well thank you very much indeed for listening I hope you've enjoyed the learning activities today and if you'd like to join us next time just look out for us on our crafty cafe check back regularly for our next show everything is on learnradio.net forward slash crafty cafe thanks so much indeed to everyone for the help of putting this show together thanks to maria for being a fabulous uh, host and thank you to me russell for hosting as well i'm fabulous She's fabulous. We're absolutely fabulous. And it'll be lovely to see you next time at the Crafty Cafe Creative Arts Learning Show. Thank you so much indeed. Until next time, it's goodbye from her. And it's goodbye from him.